my mom was like, just go in and put your head down. And I was like, okay. So I went in, I literally read one passage, then I circled B, 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 B for the rest of the test. I was knocked out the whole time. So I'm not complaining about this one because I didn't take the test. I wrote my name and answered 15 questions, so. Hi everyone, my name is Lanasia, and in today's video, I'm gonna be revealing the stats that got me into the University of Pennsylvania. So I wanna start off this video by saying two things. One, I am in by no means bragging about any of my scores or grades or anything. I'm just saying what I did in high school, and I hope it kinda of helps you guys. I'm not bragging about anything, I'm not one to brag. If you know me personally, you know I don't even like talking about these things, like it's just weird to me. And two, I hope that this video kinda of helps you guys and makes you guys feel more comfortable with applying to like top schools. Because I know when I was applying to colleges, I watched a lot of these stats videos, and most of the people had like crazy test scores and it would freak me out and make me not want to apply but I did it anyway so I hope you guys see that you can get into these colleges with non 1600 SATs and crazy stuff like you don't have to have all these high numbers in order to get to a top school so yeah I hope this kind of like encourages you guys and makes you feel more comfortable with applying to these schools so I feel like this is important I'm not a legacy kid neither of my parents went to college um, neither of my parents went to Penn obviously so just to put that out there. With that, let's just get right into the video. So I have my Common app up on my computer. Um, I'm just gonna go through everything. I'm gonna start by listing the classes that I took in high school, starting from freshman year and going throughout. Also, take into consideration that like, not all schools offer X amount of AP classes and IB classes. I honestly don't even know what IB is, but I know people did it. So don't compare what you're doing to what I'm doing because like, we might not be offered the same like opportunities and classes, so yeah. As a whole, my schedule was primarily like honors slash AP. At my school, freshmen couldn't take AP, I'm pretty sure, so most of my classes are honors, so I took honors English 1, honors World History, honors Algebra 2 and Trigonometry, honors bio and this class called rhetoric like all freshmen had to take it it was like a writing class another class called career education and technology it was like some computer class and then i took an introduction to mass media as my elective and spanish one so those are what i took my freshman year now for sophomore year you could take ap classes a lot of sophomores took ap chem but i was not taking that because why would i put myself through that no thank you so i took honors chem honors pre-calc honors u.s history one honors english two spanish two and ap psychology um there were only five sophomores in this class and most of the class was senior so it was like weird in the beginning but like it was cool i really liked the class it was fun and now i'm a psych major so glad i took that class also i want to say that throughout the four years i took gym each year gym slash health so then junior year i could finally take more ap classes this is usually when the, most people take ap classes anyway junior year um so i took ap lang a push like ap us history ap calc ap physics ap macro and then gym in spanish my elective this year or junior year was ap macro honestly everyone like says junior year is the hardest but for me it wasn't like I think sophomore year was so hard for me I don't know why it was just super hard but junior year like I wouldn't say it was a breeze because it definitely wasn't but like it definitely was not the hardest year in high school in my opinion that's that's probably like I'm probably the only person who says that but like I don't think it was too bad but they do say they say that you're supposed to try your hardest in junior year because that's what colleges look at. I don't know if that's true, that's just what I hear. Uh, so yeah. And then senior year, I took AP Lit, AP Statistics, and AP Bio. And then I took Honor Spanish for this class called Conscious of Mankind. It was like a genocide class. EPA, which is Employment Preparation and Aptitude. You like learn life skills like how to make a resume, and health and phys ed. So throughout my four years, I took nine AP classes and about 10 honors classes. I don't even know how many AP classes my school offered. I definitely didn't take all the ones that my school offered. So I was told that when the admissions officers look at your transcript, they'd like to see that you're challenging yourself each year and taking like the hardest, not the hardest classes possible, but like just continuously challenging yourself and working hard. So if your school offers AP classes, I recommend taking them. Um, I kind of like freaked out because I would watch a lot of these videos and kids would take like 11, 15 APs and I'm like, I only have nine, ah but like it's fine because my school didn't have 
thousands of APs to offer, however many APs are offered, I don't know. Just look at what your school has to offer, like your high school, and then try to take as much of the challenging classes as you can, I would say. So my GPA at the end of my freshman year was a 104.337, that was weighted, I don't have the unweighted on here. My GPA for my sophomore year was a 106.858, my GPA for my junior year was a 111.6, and then my final unweighted GPA was a 98.4107. And then my weighted GPA was a 107.4821. So at my school, you get a 10% like boost. I think it's 10% for all honors classes you take, and then a 15% for all the AP classes you take. And then I graduated summa cum laude, I can't say that right. Also, I was the valedictorian of my class. My school actually didn't have rank, like only the valedictorian and the salutatorian knew what our ranks were. So shout out to you, Clarissa, I miss you. I went to a public school, it was about like a thousand kids in New Jersey, this surprised me. Majority of those people at Penn that I've come in contact with either went to a boarding school or a private school and then like to me that was just so crazy because like all of my friends from home obviously go to public school so I was like, you went to a boarding school? Like I just cannot wrap my head around that. I was just like, what? This is so crazy. And so whenever I say like, yeah, I went to a, a public school, like I just felt so awkward because not too many, there's not too many public school people that I've come in contact with. I mean, I guess you could expect that, but I just didn't really think about it. So now <laughs> I am going to go over my AP scores. I sent all of my scores. I didn't mean to. Actually, no. I don't think I sent these. I don't remember. I think I did report them by accident, but I, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. So we're going to start with the first test. In AP Psych, I got a 3. So before the AP Psych test, my school took a trip to Boston, like a weekend trip to Boston. So I didn't study for this test. I literally studied the night before and my friends would like yell at me. They're like, stop studying on this trip. And I'm like, I gotta do well. Anyway, so I passed. I honestly was kind of disappointed because I wanted to get a 5 because I thought like, it was just so interesting to me. I thought I'd do way better. But I was happy getting a 3 because like I didn't really study that much. And honestly, like these scores don't matter. Like it didn't matter that much. In my opinion, I don't even know. So yeah, an A push, an A push physics, AP Lang, and AP Calc AB, I got twos, which is great, yay. And then in macro, I got a three. Those classes were hard. Um, I have no other explanation besides the fact that I am a horrible test taker and I always run out of time and they were hard. <laughs> and then in bio, I got a three. And in stats, I got a two also. And then AP Lit was the only test I got a one in, which I'm happy about. But I'll give you a little side story. So the day before the AP Lit test, I just felt so sick. And then the day of, I felt so sick. Like my head was pounding. I had a fever. I was just sick. But I had to take the test. I remember telling my mom, I was like, I literally, I know I'm not going to do well in this. Like I suck at anything related to English, like reading, writing. I suck at that. Um, I'm not going to do well. I didn't do well on the practice test. Like there's no point of me like stressing about this. And my mom was like, just go in and put your head down. And I was like, Okay, so I went in. I literally, I remember, I read one passage, then I circled B, 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 B for the rest of the test. I was knocked out the whole time. Like, I wasn't the only one. There were other kids who also fell asleep. Yeah, so I went in and I fell asleep. So I'm not complaining about this one because I didn't take the test. I wrote my name and answered 15 questions, so I'm fine with the one. In the end, I ended up being a AP scholar, but I didn't get awarded, like, AP scholar until July of my senior year when, like, the grades came out or the scores came out. So I didn't report the AP scholar to Penn when I applied. I also forgot to mention the fact that at my high school, you could take the AP test instead of taking the final for that class. And so for me personally, I would much rather take a test that didn't have an impact on my grades or my GPA. So that's why I took the AP test for all the classes that I took. Um, and that's also why I didn't really care that much about the scores that I got because the main reason I was taking the test to begin with was to opt out of taking the final, which is not a good mindset to have, but Oh well. <laughs> so this just goes to show that you don't need to get fives on every AP test. Like you don't even need to get fours on all the AP tests or threes because I only got three of them out of the nine that I took. So it's okay. Like you don't have to go above and beyond and get all these crazy scores because I clearly did not. 
Now for my honors and awards, I put that I received three honors. So the first is Distinguished Varsity Scholar. That's when you have a GPA above like 93. I'm not really sure what it is. So I was a Distinguished Varsity Scholar for 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. And that was at the school level. And then I did this thing called ALA Jersey Girl City. I'm pretty sure every state has it. It's basically where you go to this like summer camp for a week. Honestly, do not know how to explain it, but I put that I was the freeholder for Girl State um, and that was at the state slash regional level. I honestly don't even know if this is an honors or award, but I remember being at Girl State and they were like, you can put this in your college application. And I'm like, okay, I guess it'll go here. And then I also put that I was high on a roll for all four years and then that's at the school level. And then for the community-based programs, I put nothing because I didn't have any of that. Okay, so now for the SAT slash SAT subject tests. I did not take any SAT subject tests. In my head, these tests were so stupid. Like, I'm not honestly, I'm not really educated on what they are, but I just thought they were so stupid just a way for the college board to get your money. Like, in my head, I couldn't wrap my head around the idea of why you were paying money to take a test in like math or English if the SAT already had those categories and you could see those specific store scores. So, why should you freak out about an SAT subject test? And then I remember like going to like tours and things like that, and they're like, yeah, we recommend you take SAT subject tests. And I'm like, no, that's just stupid to me. Like, don't take my advice, but in my head, I just thought they were so stupid. Like, I guess if you're doing, like, bio or something, I guess, like, take it. But to me, I just thought they were so dumb. Like, I was not wasting extra money or extra time to take an SAT subject test. Like, they could see my grades in the class if they wanted to see how I performed in that area. That was just my mindset. Don't take my advice. Okay, now for the SAT score. So, I took the SAT five times a lot of people like a lot of like my mentors they were like you do not you should not be taking the sat that many times like you only need to take it twice like max three times but even still don't do that and i'm like freaking out because my first two three times like my scores were not what i wanted them to be so i was super nervous when i was applying to penn knowing that i had taken the sat five times and i reported all of the scores so you can take the sat five times and you'll be fine i took my first sat in january of 10th grade just for me to see what the sat test was like and to get like an idea so i knew what it was like i didn't know that we had that we were going to take a psat for that reason so i probably wasted time but it's okay so the first time i took the sat i got in 11 30 i got a 550 in reading and then a 580 in math. I was pretty proud of that score, honestly. Like, most of my friends, we got around the same score. I thought it was good. For my next SAT, I got a 1260, so I jumped 130 points, which is great. I use Khan Academy to study. I highly recommend Khan Academy if you're studying for the SAT. It's free. You can build a schedule. You can take practice tests. It helped me so much. I got a 590 in reading and then a 670 in math. When I got the score, I remember I was at crew practice and I had just gotten the email that the scores had been released and I look at it and I see 1260 and I'm like, ah! Like I was jumping up and down, I was so excited. I started crying, like I just felt so proud and like I felt like accomplished that my score had went up so much and I, I don't know, it just felt good because I was really stressing about my SAT scores. And then I took the SAT again, this is all my junior year. I took the SAT again and I got the same exact score. So I was pretty bummed about that. Then I took it again and I went up 20 points. I got a 620 in reading and a 660 in math. And then the final time I took it, it was my senior year. It was in October of my senior year, so I was really cutting it close. I studied using Khan Academy again and I got a 1330. I got a 670 in reading and a 660 in math. I was super proud of this score. Like I didn't think I could go up anymore, so I wasn't going to try to take it again. I took the 670 that I got in a previous math test along with the 670 I got on my last SAT and I my super score was a 1340 low-key I was freaking out because again like it wasn't as high as the videos that I've watched like the stats that I've seen but it was good for me like I jumped from an 1130 to a 1340 1330 which is 200 points and to me that's a lot I don't know if it's a lot in like the grand scheme of things but in my opinion that was a lot and I was super proud of myself for jumping that much yeah, I took the ACT once but I realized the night before that the ACT just wasn't for me because I watched a lot of YouTube videos and they're like, the ACT is super fast paced, you get more questions, less time. And I was like, I already struggle with time. I'm not gonna do well on this test. I'm not studying for this. So I didn't finish the test. I got a 25. I just did not report that 
25 because I did better in my SAT. Don't freak out about your scores because I definitely freaked out a lot about my test scores and my numbers and looking back on it I wish I didn't because like I just worked up so many nerves and like I felt so anxious all the time because of my scores but in the end like I did well for me personally, maybe not well compared to like other people watching this video or other applicants or pen students, but for me personally, I think I did well. So I hope this like shows you you don't need crazy numbers to get in. Seriously, like if you have a 1200 or an 1100 or a 1300 or a 16, whatever, no matter your SAT score, apply. Like literally apply to these schools. I remember talking to some of my friends and they're like, yeah, I'm not going to apply to like any of those types of schools because my my grades aren't my scores aren't high enough and I'm not going to get in so it's not worth it. And I'm like, you don't know that. There's more to you than just what you got on your SAT last fall. Like, apply. As long as you study and work hard, you can get any score, any grade that you want. Literally, all you have to do is put the work in and you'll see something you'll see something good come out of it. For my activities, I reported seven activities. So my first activity, I it's like an athletic. I did crew all four years. Senior year, I kind of like quit halfway through. And then for my next activity, it was community service slash volunteer. I was the president of NHS. I did that 11th and 12th grade, and that was all year long. Then my next club, I put treasurer for a girls athletic association. This part kind of confuses me because I was only treasurer for junior year I think but I was a part of GAA for all four years so I just put all four years I don't know if that's right but whatever and then my next club I put school representative for stand up and rebel which is basically a club for students against drugs and alcohol <laughs> yeah and I did that all four years also my next thing that I put I was picked for this federal aviation administration monthly mentoring so basically once a month, me and five other students from my school reported to the FAA Center and we learned about different aspects of FAA. Then my next activity, I was a cashier at Wawa, which is like a convenience store. If you don't know what Wawa is, I apologize. Like, you're missing out. Wawa is just great. I did that 11th and 12th grade. And the next thing I put, I was the executive board member of student council. This was also weird because I was only that position for like 11th and 12th grade, but I was part of student council for all four years. It was like weird because if you were NHS president, you were executive board member of student council. So yeah, I put them both there. I know that they say don't overload your application with all these activities that you did like these irrelevant activities that don't matter and I agree don't do that colleges can smell out when you're being fishy when you're just trying to like look good for them like put only the stuff that took time put the stuff that you were passionate about the stuff that you were interested in and stuff that you genuinely enjoyed don't put stuff on your application that you did just to look good like no make sure you Pick up some leadership roles, they'd love to see that. Okay, so I watched a few videos when I was applying and they were like, only put like five clubs. So from my understanding, you should only be putting the clubs that one, took the most time, two, the ones that you actually cared about, the ones that you were passionate about, the ones that kind of like help create your story. So your college application is kind of like you trying to like tell a story and you want all the points of your story to kind of connect and kind of like coincide and fit together like a puzzle. All your clubs and things should all come together to like illustrate your passions and the stuff you care about and the stuff that matter to you in your life. Like if you are the president of Spanish club, just, just to have a leadership role and you don't really do anything with that, don't put that on your college application. Like it doesn't help complete that story that you're trying to show. Don't do that. And also my piece of advice to any freshman or anyone who is in high school watching this video, don't join clubs just to look good for college because I know in the beginning I definitely did that and looking back at it like I kind of regret it. I feel like in the moment I felt like a phony because like with some of my clubs I just I don't know like I just felt like a phony while I was there like I didn't care about them like they were boring but I just still did it because I thought they would look good for college and in the end I didn't even report them on the application like I didn't put them on the application at all because they were irrelevant and they had nothing to do with me they weren't related to me or my passions or the things that I'm interested about it was just a waste of time and I feel like the college admissions officers would have easily sniffed out I was just doing those clubs just to look good for them which is not something that you should do so my piece of advice would be when deciding which clubs to put and which clubs to not put so you'll have your club and you can think does this help my application like this is this is this club making my application stronger is it making me stand out or is it just making my application longer 
you don't necessarily want a longer application. You want one that's going to stand out, one that's strong, or one that shows you, you know? I'm going to talk a little bit about the interview because I know that plays a role in the application process. So I got the email saying that I had an interview and of course I look up the person who I'm interviewing with. She was like a nurse practitioner, I think. Um, and I just found out some information about her. She looked super nice. I was excited. Not excited. Sorry. I was nervous. I was super, super nervous. I remember it was at the bookstore across the street from my house. So I walk in, I'm sitting there waiting for her, like looking around, like waiting for her to come. And she comes with her whole family and I'm like, was I supposed to bring my family? Like, what is this? So she comes with her whole family. And so they go like walk around the bookstore and then like she comes to sit with me. I had watched a lot of videos like interview prep videos I looked up like the interview questions that Penn asked and there's like a whole list of questions that Penn interviewers asked all the questions that she asked me came from that list and so I was ready for like everything that she asked which is good so you definitely want to prepare for your interviews like look up videos about interviews look up different uh, websites that list interview questions so I was ready I was prepared I felt super prepared then I get there I'm so nervous in my opinion, my interview was bad. Like, I thought it was the worst thing in the world. Like, I, I literally, <laughs> this is embarrassing. I cried during the interview. She cried during the interview. Like, which was good. I think that was good. Like, the fact that we both, like, cried. I don't necessarily remember specifically what we were crying about, but I feel like it was a cute little moment. But besides that, like, the whole interview, from my perspective, was so bad. At the start of the interview, she said to me, she goes, yeah, I've been doing interviews for some time and no one, no student who I've interviewed have ever gotten in a pen. And I'm like, well, thank you for the encouragement. That freaked me out. I was like, oh my gosh, like, I'm not getting in. Like, she just said, she just, oh, I was literally freaking out, you guys. So I'm literally, I shake, so my leg is like going like up and down, like of nervousness and like, Oh my goodness. So I get in the car to like leave and I'm like crying again because it was just such a bad interview. I was so mad. I was like, wow, like that just ruined everything. But I always think the worst. So maybe it wasn't that bad. But in my head, it was just awful. I don't even know how to explain what was so awful about it. But it just was like, it was just so bad. Thinking back to it, I'm like, wow, that sucked. But I got in. So I don't think the interviews play that much of a role in your application process as it may seem. Also, I thought in the beginning, I thought that I got an interview because like that meant that I had a higher chance at getting into Penn. But the majority of students get interviews. It has nothing to do with your application, um, which was interesting to me. That's what I heard at least. I'm pretty sure that's true. As far as the essay goes, comment down below if you'd like me to read my Common App essay or my Penn specific essay. If I get enough requests, I'll do it. Um, I gotta like look over it. I just feel like weird reading my essay to the world. I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it for the stats I got me into the University of Pennsylvania. Like I said, I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was comforting, and I hope it showed you that like you don't need crazy scores in order to get in. Like I can't stress that enough because I definitely thought that, and I definitely was low key reluctant to apply. Be sure to like this video if it was helpful at all, and subscribe if you like these types of collegey life videos. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Oh,